Hi, Doodle! Oh, Skiles! How do you doodly do? Skiles, it's D. Everyone uses D. Doodle's stupid. Isn't it just the loveliest day outside? Merch average. It might be a bit chilly, though, but I can see you already knew that. <laughs> can I help you? Of course. Why beat around the bush? I'm here for... You do remember, I found your hidden messages in the last review, so I thought we'd do it together. Just me and me old best pal. And I brought Charcoal Angel, too. Uh, so you're here for the review? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm here to ask you guys what you think about purple hair. I actually don't know much about Wander Over Yonder, so I'm going to skip this one. Bye. Uh, let's just get this over with. <laughs> Wander Over Yonder was created by Craig McCracken, whose past projects include Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends and the Powerpuff Girls. The old one, not the rebooted Powerpuff Girls, which he passed on mostly because of his deal with Disney for the show. And if I wasn't dead inside before, oh, I certainly am now. So, what is Wander Over Yonder? Is it something like we've seen before? Is it something maybe new, as cartoons have been proving to do? How does it fare in the world of cartoons as we know it today? Well, no surprise. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, well, no surprise here that the show is actually really fantastic. Season one can be a bit slow for some people, but season two is definitely some grade A cartoon material and highly enjoyable. It's not that season one is bad or anything; it just has a lot more establishing to do. And the second season is just more fleshed out, while also having more of a threat with Lord Dominator, who is also great. But we'll get back to that. The show stars a character named Wanda, voiced by Jack McBrayer. Wanda's purpose, or goal, is to travel the galaxy doing any and every good deed he can. So much so that it can actually be considered one of his very flaws. We don't really know much else about Wander or his mysterious past, except that he might be over a thousand years old. Sylvia is his partner, played by April Winchell. Sylvia is Wander's rough and tough best friend, who is a good contrast to Wander's peaceful nature. Not only that, but they generally have a great platonic relationship with each other, which is so refreshing to see. We've also got our main villain, Lord Hater, voiced by Keith Thur Thurgathers. Keith Thurgathers. Thurgathers. <laughs> we love Keith Thurgathers. <laughs> voiced by Keith Ferguson, who has a really great slow building relationship with Wander over both seasons. And he's freaking hilarious. Commander Peepers, voiced by Tom Kenny, did I mention he's hilarious? <laughs> when they're together, they're hilarious times a zillion. Ha ha ha! I think you get the picture. Sir, the flag is really just symbolic. No! Get him! Ah! So let's get into some of the episodes and dynamics of the show. Hold on. You're gonna skip over Lord Dominator? Diddly? I'm getting back to that. Burp. Okie dokie, diddly doodly, fiddly foodly skadoos! <laughs> what kind of flanderized flander did I write you into? The universe of Wander Over Yonder seems to be very villain-heavy, and superheroes aren't really a thing, unfortunately, or really any kind of justice system in the galaxy. It just seems everybody's at the mercy of any supervillain who decides to take shit over. And that's kind of an interesting trait of the show. It's not the traditional superheroes we see, but average, good-hearted folk, more specifically our two main characters, making a difference. In season one, we have Lord Hater, number one villain in the galaxy, doing what else but being evil and conquering the universe. Until he meets Wander, and is constantly burdened and bothered by the orange little weirdo, over the entire first season, and by the second, Hater's quest for Wander turns into a full-out obsession. Oh, yeah, and he's no longer the greatest villain in the universe. Oh, oh, by the way, side note, I love that little gag they do where they run around the planet visual. It, it doesn't make any sense, and it's, it's a little bit unsettling, but I just love that imagery. It's, it's great. I, I, I mean, blah, blah. Season one is a lot of focus and development for, well, all the characters, but mostly Wanda and Sylvia. If you ask me, this is what makes some of the episodes a bit slower, but certainly not less enjoyable. 
But in season two, it's a total payoff because many of those characters come back, either for follow-up episodes or for the effort of background continuity, which I appreciate. Not to mention, we're finally introduced to Lord Dominator himself. Ah, maybe we should have mentioned this before, but spoilers. Who was that guy? Lord Dominator, who's voiced by Noah Wells, is a great new addition. And spoilers, she's not a guy. Lady? I guess no one thought of that po obvious pos possibility. I mean, her armor, but her ship. I mean, evil chicks are nothing new in media. I assume it counts as equal opportunity employment. Okay, but that being said, it is a nitpick. The show does have some very good developed female characters with Sylvia and Dominator, who are both again voice acted wonderfully. You can just tell Lord Dominator absolutely loves what she's doing. <gasps> I have a zillion tiny spikes that shoot out a zillion tiny poison darts that make your tongue swell up and you're all like, ah, No! Return for my own tongue! Curse you, Dominator! Curse you! One thing I do really admire with shows in general is taking full advantage of creative possibilities instead of the same old, same old. Whether it be with showing a new perspective, messing with the timeline of things, or focusing on new or undeveloped elements of the show. We see Wander Over Yonder doing this on many occasions, such as doing an entire episode around characters like Watchdogs or whatever this is. An episode where the plot, well, won't seem to pick a plot. And an episode where they constantly satire older cartoons, mostly He-Man, but also the Jetsons, Gravity Falls, and make little things like animation errors and low-budget effects just so funny. But then you also get episodes like The Wanderers, an episode that conveys a good and heartfelt message about accepting others, but also having to accept yourself. Thanks, Syl. That was the most important part. So it's kind of like the complete package. And the whole show was very visually interesting as well. So again, what is Wander Over Yonder? On its own, or compared to what came before it? Compared to what we know about Craig McCracken and his other shows, I would believe that these do have similarities, but neither of them fall into the category of repetitive or unoriginal. No, definitely not. They're all very different in character, story, and setup, but there does seem to be a similar soul to them. Each one is good in its own way, and each one is timeless. And that definitely includes Wander Over Yonder. You could watch it now, or even ten years from now. There's no memes or pointless rap numbers. And even if there was, it would still be a hell of a lot better than this. Live action photos aren't funny just because cartoon! But not comparing the songs and music for Wander Over Yonder. They are really good too. This show is obviously created by passionate and very imaginative people, and I do think it is a bit underrated. So, we have good compelling characters, creative ideas and episodes, and threat building up with Lord Dominator. What could possibly go wrong? And I say again, what could possibly go wrong? <sighs> Wander Over Yonder is going to be cancelled after its second season. The final episode is scheduled for Monday, June 27th, 2016. A lot of people are trying to convince the studio to save the show for one more third season, as the creator Craig McCracken had initially wanted to complete the arcs of the characters. But I'm not holding my breath. According to sources, the show wasn't cancelled due to low ratings or the producers not liking the show. It seems two seasons was what was agreed upon, and they just don't feel they really need to fund any more. As simple as that. Crap, the world is so unfair! <laughs> Did you just run away from the mic, Doodle? Doodle D, you come back here right now and finish this review. Uh... Okay, how are we supposed to end this? With broken dreams and shattered hopes! It's time. Doodle, wait! <gasps> Did you just break the fourth wall? And stop calling me that. Doodle is just stupid. That sounds stupid. You're stupid! There's still hope. The creator, crew, and fans are all working to save the show. With petitions, letters, Operation Bamboo, and more. There's still a chance! So, it's definitely possible. We all work together and believe in it.
What? What's that noise? <laughs> D? What? What?